Hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about forgiveness while we take a look at the story of a man who found himself far from home. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about forgiveness. Which is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. What's that? I thought I tried my hand at a little sketch for today's show. Can I see it? It's not good. Please, 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 please. I mean. It looked really good from what I saw. Can I see it? Okay. The fig is really cute. I like it. Can I have it back? Yeah, of course. Oh no, I am so sorry. Great. What are you doing? It's ruined. No, you can totally save that. Make it into something cool. You have to say that because you messed it up. No, lots of great artists make big mistakes and use them in their artwork. Really? For sure. In fact, I know one of them. Her name is Whitney, and we're gonna talk to her right now. Did you plan this? Happy accident. Hey, Whitney, come on in. Hey! Hi! It's good to see you. Yes, you too. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what you do? Sure, I am an artist. I draw and I paint. I also do some cut paper animation. I've been drawing and painting since I was a little girl. That's awesome. What do we have here? Right, so I like to draw from observation. This is candy and that I had lying around my house and a plant and also trees. I love drawing trees in different seasons. These are amazing. What got you interested in art? Well, I've always loved to draw and paint, but when I was in high school, my art teacher laughed at me because I couldn't read a ruler. And she said, you're gonna be an art teacher, and that is exactly what I did. Yeah, I mean, whenever I like to paint, it always turns into some unrecognizable color blotches. Well, I made a lot of mistakes too when I first started painting, and I still struggle with how to create what I see in my imagination. So, what do you do with your mistakes? Well, I like to say that I repurpose them. Take this for example. I was using my hot glue gun and it dripped all over this canvas I was already working on. Honestly, it still looks pretty cool to me, but I get what you mean. So how will you repurpose that? I've got a few ideas. Can I show you later? Absolutely. In the meantime, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Often when Jesus taught, he spoke in parables or stories using everyday things to help people understand spiritual truths. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Chloe. Hi Chloe. One day while Jesus was teaching, a group of tax collectors and others who were considered outcasts gathered around Jesus. The religious leaders were totally shocked by this. This man welcomes sinners and riffraff. He even eats with them. Jesus turned to the leaders and invited them to listen too. He spoke to them in parables or stories, one about a lost sheep and one about a lost coin. The third story was about a lost son. There once was a wealthy man who had two sons. The youngest son was totally fed up with living at home. He hated having to do what his dad said and trying to live up to his perfect big brother. So he did something extreme. Give me my share of all your money. Now, this was really rude, but it's even worse than you might think. Usually, family money would only be passed on to children after the father died. So it's like the younger son was saying he wished his father was dead. Even though the father must have been terribly hurt, he divided up his property and gave a share of the money to the younger son. I'm in the money, woohoo, the sky is sunny. The younger son took off for a faraway country. When he arrived, he started spending money like it was water. Fine clothes, awesome food, wild parties. The younger son lived it up big time. But 
you can guess what happened. The money ran out. And right about that time, a famine hit. It was hard to find food, even if you did have money. The younger son was stuck. So he went to work for a pig farmer. The younger son was so desperate, he actually wanted to eat the disgusting pig scraps. The sharp hunger in his stomach woke him up. At home, my father's servants have more than enough food to eat. But I'm dying from hunger. The younger son started to form a plan. I'll go home to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Yeah, that's it. So the younger son set off for home. He was tired and weak, and the journey seemed to take forever. But at last, he neared home. I say, but hey, ma'am, I'm not, I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. The father's heart was filled with love. He ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. <clears throat> father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called out to the servants. Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. In no time at all, the younger son was dressed in fresh clothes instead of rags, and found himself the guest of honor at a feast. His head must have been spinning. But meantime, we can't forget the older brother. The whole time his kid brother was out living wild and wasting money, the older brother was working hard for their father. The older brother had been out in the field all day. So when he came home to the sounds of music and dancing, he was shocked. He called one of the servants. What's going on? Haven't you heard? Your brother came back. Your dad's so excited, he killed the fattest calf for a party. What? You should come in. Your father's looking for you. Uh, let me think. No. Just think what you'd feel like if you were the older brother. This whole thing was so unfair. When the father came out and begged his older son to come in, the son let him have it. Look, all these years, I've worked like a slave for you. I have always obeyed your orders. You never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours wasted your money on crazy things. Now he comes home, and for him you kill the fattest calf. The father looked on his older son with the same love he gave his younger son. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. And that's the end. Jesus didn't tell the crowd what happened next. Maybe the older brother had a change of heart and came inside to have a blast with his brother. Or maybe he held on to his anger and stayed outside, alone. The end. Wow, there is a lot going on in that story. Yeah, sometimes I get the younger brother. Sometimes I want to do what I want to do. But then also sometimes I feel like the older brother and I want everything to be perfectly fair. They both needed forgiveness. The younger brother for being hurtful and making really poor decisions. And the older one for being angry and bitter. So, what's our part in the story? Well, the father forgave both his sons. He forgave the son who did big, bold, awful things, but he also forgave the son who did everything right on the outside, but had a hard, bitter heart. And God is just like that father. God is always ready to forgive you for what you've done, no matter how big or small. If you go on a website that your parents specifically told you is off limits. Or you had a rotten attitude when your mom asked you to do something. 
If you lie about brushing your teeth, no matter what, you can always come back to God and know that God will forgive you. Just like the younger son. And the older one too. Knowing God will forgive you is never an excuse to try getting away with something. You will only hurt yourself and others, but you can have absolute confidence that God will always welcome you back, no matter what. It's the most amazing news ever. You got that right. See you next time. Bye, Bye Chloe. Chloe. So here's the thing, God will always forgive you. Yeah, God is like a master artist. He takes our messes and mistakes and turns them into something beautiful. Speaking of which. Hey there. Hey. hey. We're so excited to see what you did with your mess up. Well, here you go. Wow. wow. I took my hot glue gun and I added more hot glue and then I turned it into flowers. It looks like you did it on purpose. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us today and showing us your process. My pleasure. See you guys next time. Bye, Bye Whitney. She really inspired me. Hey, let's see your sketch. See how your mistake turned into something amazing? Yeah. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, see you, you next time. time.